What's it like to experience a total solar eclipse from above the clouds? We join the party to find out on this flight at 39,000 feet through the path of totality. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from GreenerGrass.com. This is a flight into the total solar eclipse, and you're coming along. Here's the plan. We'll leave Austin, Texas just before 1 o'clock and fly northeast toward Indianapolis, tracking the path of totality along the way, hoping for around 10 minutes of total darkness. We've chosen this Southwest Airlines flight because they claim this is the commercial flight with the most time within the path of the total solar eclipse operating today. How in the world did we end up on this flight, Suzanne? So I saw a press release from Southwest Airlines back in October when they announced two flights that their meteorologists had determined would be most in the path of totality, which is a flight from Dallas to Pittsburgh, and then this one from Austin to Indianapolis. So I booked us on this one. Well, that was a good call. I am super excited about it. I spotted goodies over there, uh, including sun chips. You know, Delta's been getting all of the attention uh, about their eclipse flights, but these are regularly scheduled flights. So what that means is there are probably gonna be people who just booked a flight from Austin to Indianapolis <laughs> uh, with a surprise along the way. It's gonna be a party. Definitely. <laughs> We arrived early, which gave us time to worry. Usually when we're filming a video, we have a pretty good idea of what to expect. But today, well, there are a lot of challenges headed our way. FAA has published a notice that there could be delays in the path of totality or reroute. So um, we don't even know about our flight path or if we might be delayed. We're flying southwest. As you know, they don't have assigned seating, which means we don't know exactly where we're going to sit. Worse yet, we got a pretty late boarding position, so there's no guarantee of a window seat. We really have no idea if one side of the plane is better to sit on than the other. So we're just going to have to pick something and go with it. The only equipment we have to use to film is just an iPhone, so I have no idea what that's going to capture, if anything. I was pretty concerned that we wouldn't have those Eclipse glasses, but it looks like they're providing them, so we can stop worrying about that one. Headed over to the gate, it looks like the party is getting started. There are decorations and goodie bags. Local news is here, too, so this is going to be an exciting flight. No doubt about that. The one-year-old 737 MAX 8 that'll take us up to Indianapolis is almost here. Should be pulling to the gate any minute now. So in my younger days, I used to think the Southwest boarding process was kind of fun. You got to like select your seatmate so I could like pick out the cute guy I wanted to sit next to. Obviously before I met Jeb, <laughs> but now it is. A little stressful. There's a chance that we do all this work. We recorded all this stuff and we don't make a video because we don't get a window seat. So if you're seeing this, <laughs> it's a pretty good hint that we got a window seat, but you'll know, we don't know yet. Keep your fingers crossed. This looked like a pretty full flight, understandably. We tried to upgrade our boarding position, but it just wasn't possible. This is so nerve wracking. We're so far back, I don't think there's a chance, but maybe we'll get a window seat. Boarding has begun, it's getting exciting. Still not sure where we're gonna sit. There are a lot of people who just got on, a lot, a lot of pre-boards, so we'll see. But suddenly, it was our turn. On the way down the jet bridge, each passenger received this bag of treats. And we made our way down the aisle, looking hard for a window seat. But as you'd expect, none were available. So we settled into seats 28D and E, a middle and aisle. And thanks to a very friendly seatmate in 28F, I was able to lean over to keep an eye out the window. Even the ground crew was getting in the mood. The bag was full of universe-themed treats, everything from Starburst and a moon pie to those critical glasses. The pilots and dispatchers worked hard to make this as special as it could be. Once we get airborne here, our route is going to take us right up over Dallas. We changed the route, actually. They had us going over towards Houston. And we changed it to go up over Dallas and Little Rock to give you the best view possible. Full totality in Austin is supposed to be around 1.36 p.m. It is 1.04 now. It seems like it's starting to get a little bit dark, so let's get in the air. We're taxiing, we're taxiing fast. That's great. Let's get into the sky. Yeah, these pilots want to get us up there and experiencing the path of totality. We heard they already asked FAA for a reroute to get us closer, so that's awesome. And just like that, we were in the air. Gotta love Southwest Airlines' uh, live television feature, so we're able to keep track of what's going on and when we're going to encounter uh, the, uh, the eclipse here on this flight. It's disappointing not to have a window, but this is still very exciting. Southwest Airlines is offering complimentary cosmic cocktails on today's Solarbration flight. I ordered the Red Sky, which is actually a Bloody Mary. And I had the Sun Flare, which is actually a screwdriver. Add to the party atmosphere of this flight. A palpable sense of excitement ran through the cabin. It was just impossible to miss. We even got to play galactic trivia with Eclipse-related questions. 
Unfortunately, I never did ring my flight attendant call button quickly enough. It is certainly getting darker out there, you can tell, uh, as uh, totality is getting closer. We are in the turn over Dallas as we speak, and the sun right now is mostly directly above us, maybe off to the right just a little bit. The schedule for totality is about seven minutes behind us is our best guess. So uh, it's supposed to reach over Dallas a little under seven minutes from now. So it's going to catch up with us here in just about uh, six, seven minutes. And the crew are dimming the uh, lights uh, to add to the effect, but it's certainly getting darker out there. Uh, this is this is a super exciting moment. It sure is. I mean, that's what everybody has said, and uh, I think we're certainly we're certainly feeling that same level of excitement uh, here at thirty-five thousand feet or whatever we are. The cabin was dark, and everyone got quiet as the sun slowly disappeared. The moon shadow moved at about 1,000 miles per hour, and our plane was flying around 600 miles per hour. That meant we were extending the amount of time we'd spent inside the shadow. This is exactly what I'd wanted to see, flying above the clouds. We could not only see the moon's shadow moving over the Earth, but also the light at the edge of the shadow. It was unlike anything I've ever seen. It was nearly impossible to see the moon covering the sun from here. For that, you're much better off staying on the ground. But this light is unlike anything you could see from anywhere other than here at 39,000 feet. It's simply magical. Absolute insanity. That is stunningly beautiful. It's not only the most beautiful light I've ever seen uh, from a flight, but it's also the most bizarre, just not only knowing what it is, but just the color. It's hard to describe. I, I don't know that the camera's really gonna get it. This is really a magical experience. If you're around in 20 years, Make sure you book yourself on a flight for the next solar eclipse here in the United States. Less than 10 minutes after we'd entered it, the shadow passed us by. So after all my worrying if there'd be glasses or not, we ended up not really needing them. The sun was mostly directly above us, so we barely saw it. So we didn't really end up needing this, all that worrying for nothing. We paid $290 each for our tickets and another $25 each for early bird boarding. Unfortunately, that proved fairly worthless in this special flight. Now, even though Southwest was not able to facilitate any S-turns in the air, we had a lot of fun on board and enjoyed the festive atmosphere and unforgettable experience in the sky. For more from this flight, check out Skylight Productions, Luna Dog Aviation, and Chess Aviation, all linked in the description below. Between now and the next time, see you in the path of totality. Yes, yes.